It was a chance meeting. Or was it? I was walking in the parking lot of my local Starbucks with Gabrielle, my two-year-old daughter, in my arms when a guy comes over and started to talk to me. He told me he'd seen me give two different seminars several years ago and say, hey, do you still do seminars? I said, I love to do seminars. I love doing seminars. And he said he was hosting a conference in Charlotte for assorted CEOs and was wondering if I would be interested in speaking to the group. Heck yes, I would love to. In fact, I just published my little book of leadership. He told me there was another big meeting that would take place in the fall and that he would recommend me for that one as well. I gave him my coin card and my Phillies-themed business card. As he smiled, I suggested that he call my office on Monday to speak with Michelle, our queen of events. He assured me that he would. I also let him know that we would send him a seminar kit. Even though I wanted his business card badly, it was Saturday morning and we both had shorts on, so I left and I left it to the gods that he would call. Just after I strapped Gabrielle in her car seat, I turned around to the man who was handing me his business card, smiling. Yes. After my conference call with him today, it turns out that this is a major business opportunity for my company. And that's the end of the story for now. Coincidence? Chance meeting? Serendipity? My personal philosophy and belief is that there are no accidents. But that may be a result of growing up as an idealist in the 60s. But a bigger question is, what led up to that interaction? My years of hard work, my reputation, my writing, my seminars, and my books created the opportunity for that meeting. I was both recognizable and attractive. Not pretty attractive. I mean, I was attractive as a personality. I was both available and approachable. I was memorable enough to spur an action on the part of the person who recognized me. What would have happened if that person bumped into you at your Starbucks on Saturday morning? Rather than tell me what you probably already know, let me answer this with a series of questions that will hopefully lead you to take action towards reputation, recognition, and approachability. When you Google yourself, does your presence occupy at least the first page? Are your social media messages getting responses? Are people proactively posting on your Facebook page about how much they enjoy you and are inspired by you? Are your tweets being retweeted? Are you even tweeting at all? Are you writing in a manner that is attracting others? Are you speaking at trade shows in order to gain a, a perspective or gain prospective customers? Are you doing anything that your competition is not doing in order to appear different from them and more valuable than they are? Are you building your personal brand or are you just tagging along with your company's brand and product? Now, these are not just ouch questions. They're also success questions, life questions, and reputation questions. And in the end, they're legacy questions. If you're going to win in sales, you have to be a dominant player, not just a sales rep. Sales reps make quotas. Dominant players don't worry about quota. They blow it away. And dominant players gain recognition, build reputation based on hard work. The guy in Starbucks didn't just recognize me. He remembered me. And it didn't just happen. I spent the last 35 years making it happen. I'm writing this and speaking this to you and for you, so that you may become inspired to dedicate yourself to next level achievement. In my years of experience, I've discovered that more salespeople complain about what isn't rather than talk about what's possible. More salespeople whine about their price of the economy rather than take aggressive action to build awareness and value in the heart of the customer. My heart is in selling. My heart is in writing. My heart is in giving memorable presentations. My heart is in providing value to existing and prospective customers. Where's your heart? What are you determined to do? What are you dedicated to do? How much time are you dedicating to that determination? My meeting on Saturday had nothing to do with luck. 30 years ago, Melvin Green, one of my mentors taught me, hard work makes luck.